Okay, uh, c'est toi, je pense. So, it's now 3.02. I'll get started. Jean-Pierre, do you agree? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Heritage Week for the City of Moncton. It's really a, a pleasure for me to welcome you to this virtual session. It's the first time we do this during this COVID year, but in cooperation with the Embassy of France and the Consulate General of France in the Atlantic provinces, the Heritage Committee, uh, Conservation Committee is proposing this, this um, webinar with Mr. Laurent Roturier, who is the president of the National Association of the Regional Directorates for Cultural Affairs, the DRACs, they're called in Ile-de-France. He's going to give us a, a information session on the built heritage conservation strategies in certain regions of France. So it's I'm very I'm eager to listen to his presentation. It's called Experiences in the Implementation of Heritage Policies Within a, a Territory for the Built, the Tangible and the Intangible Heritage. You'll also have the opportunity to ask Mr. Rodrigue questions at the end or anybody else. My name is Jean Leroux and I'm an architect and historian. I'm now in Fredericton, the capital of New Brunswick. Currently, I am the director of collections and exhibitions at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. But for the last 20 years or so, I've worked for uh, towards the uh, safeguarding the her heritage here in New Brunswick, and I'm continuing to do so. But this webinar today will be mostly in French, but we will have simultaneous interpretation services into English. Participants can ask your questions in French or English. Listening in, so uh, welcome. Um, it is going to be a French uh, presentation, but there will be simultaneous English translation for you as well. Uh, and the audio, it's interesting. Uh, it's through a phone call. So you watch this presentation, you pick up your phone, you dial this number and you can listen to simultaneous, simultaneous English translation. And the number to call for that is started already. You can ask your questions as well in English and I'll answer them. The number to call for English translation is 1-506-406-4641. I'll repeat that again. It's 1-506-406-4641. And then you have to enter a code number for that. And the code number, always lots of numbers in uh, online stuff, is 797-786-786. 177. So if you do that and uh, you can you can uh, join up and it's really definitely worth it. Hello. Uh... So moving on, I'm going to introduce our speakers uh, and I'm going to introduce our panelists. First of all, it's my great honor to introduce Her Worship Don Arnold, the mayor of the city of Moncton. Ms. Arnold, thank you, Sean. On behalf of the Municipal Council and the residents of Moncton, I am very pleased to welcome you here to this first of two virtual webinars during our Heritage Week. Schools get together who are very passionate about heritage preservation, such as Mr. Chitterer and Councillor Terrio, you know that amazing things are going to happen. Nous sommes très heureux very grateful for the great cooperation between the Consulat General de France and the French Embassy in Canada and the City of Moncton. What a wonderful project. We had to adapt our original plans for Heritage Week uh, due to the pandemic. I am certain that this will be a very successful event and that we will reach additional people with this virtual aspect. I'd like to thank Madame Roussel from the, the uh, attaché at the consulate and Mr. Consul Johan Schetterer. Without you, this initiative would not have been possible. And I'd like to thank Mr. Laurent Returier for sharing his knowledge with you. Thank you. Be able to come to Moncton, we'll be able to share with you in person the beautifully restored buildings in our community. 
Also want to give a very particular shout out and thanks to Councillor Paulette Terrio, whose passion for heritage preservation is just so incredible and so inspiring. So I wish you all a really a great webinar and invite you to take part in many of the other events that are taking place virtually this week during Moncton's first Heritage Week from tours to scavenger hunts. Hello, merci beaucoup. Okay, merci. Thank you, Your Worship. And I just like to ask people who are here to please mute your microphones because we can hear a lot of papers being shuffled uh, and keyboards. So if you could mute your microphone, that would be helpful. Thank you. So now it's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Johan Schitterer, who is General Consul of France for the Atlantic provinces. Mr. Schitterer. Thank you, John. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, we're very happy with this cooperation uh, on heritage. It's really the fruit of a number of exchanges for some time already with, be, with between us and the uh, City Hall. And I think we started working on this last February before the start of the pandemic. And I'm very happy to see it come to life today. Moncton has a particular history for France because some, just over 50 years ago in 1918, we were... Uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the arrival of four delegates in France. And it was the ex the installation of the first consul general in of France in the Atlantic provinces, originally uh, in Halifax. And we're always happy to work with City Hall in Moncton and, uh, and your worship and hoping that we will continue to work, develop our relationship. This webinar was organized along with the team at uh, in Ottawa, the embassy, and we're all very happy and very thrilled to work together with that uh, team in the at cultural services in Ottawa. And I'd like to thank more particularly our cultural uh, counselor, who that you will hear in a few moments. This strategic moment for Moncton's heritage and more generally of the Moncton Heritage Week. We believe it will be a milestone for Canada in the fields of conservation of, and rehabilitation of the natural, intangible, and architectural heritage. So, uh, thank you to all of you, and a special word of thanks to Mr. Laurent Roturier, and whose reputation precedes him, and I hope we will get to meet in person soon. You are well recognized in uh, cul the cultural world, and I'm very pleased to see you here in Moncton with us today. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Your Worship, and good afternoon to everybody. Your Worship, and my... Congratulations and thank you for this initiative that will be uh, seen across Canada and it for this implementation of a heritage policy. Very extremely pleased. You involve France and, it, and its expertise in this seminar, and I see this as a brilliant opportunity between France and Canada, and more specifically with Moncton, obviously. I'd also like to thank your teams and more specifically your um, Madame Paulette Terrio, municipal councillor, with whom we've worked so well over the last few months in spite of the pandemic. And a big word of thanks as well to Mr. Laurent Roturier, who is the yeah. so most accomplished professional amongst us. Uh, in this, in these uh, matters. Well, thank you, dear Laurent, and thank coming. you to all of you, and thank you for all of you for participating today. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Madame Paulette Thériault, of the, who is chair of the Heritage Conservation Board for the City of Moncton and Municipal Councillor of the City of Moncton. And just a, a few brief words on her history many times about the value of heritage and architecture in Moncton and it's no secret that some of the most important buildings in New Brunswick and in fact in Eastern Canada are in Moncton and it's our job to share that with people because a lot of people don't understand that and it's projects like this that will make a difference. So it's really a big pleasure for me to talk to her quite often on the importance of heritage here in Moncton. And she, uh, Madame Thériault, knows the value of these buildings. And so we really have some jewels, in uh, heritage jewels here in Moncton. Thank you, Madame Thériault. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'm very touched by your kind words. So on behalf of the Heritage Board for the City of Moncton, good afternoon, everybody. 
and welcome especially special welcome to our keynote speaker mr laurent roturier and our moderator john leroux so as we mentioned my name is paulette lerterio i'm a municipal councillor i'm also chairperson of the heritage conservation board and it's really a great pleasure for us i mentioned it last night at our public meeting of council it was a, quite an experience for us because it's our first heritage week because of covid we had to change the format for the uh, week and adopt a plan b which was a a, virtu a week of virtual events and because of the great cooperation and 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 our our discussions with uh, Mr. Joanne Chetier, our Consul General of France here in Moncton, and his whole team, it's thanks to you that we were able to bring this project to uh, realization. And also, I'd like to congratulate the French Embassy in Ottawa for the wonderful cooperation. We're very, very lucky here. Yet last night I mentioned it, and I'll say it in English right now. For the, for um, we feel that this year telling our story really is being done through the lens of global solidarity. And I think this, the entrance into the um, virtual Heritage Week through um, our partnership with uh, La France is, um, ça confirme ce process. It confirms the process. Thank you and have a great webinar. Thank you. And our keynote speaker, Mr. Laurent Roturier. Mr. Roturier was appointed Regional Director for Cultural Affairs of the, the DRAC for Ile de France. He came into, uh, he assumed the position in uh, September, last September 2019. It's the fourth DRAC that he's working in. And if you're not familiar with the DRAC, the DRAC is the direct representative of the Department of Culture in the regions. The DRAC are responsible for the conservation and the promotion of the heritage, as well as the promotion of heritage and architecture in each region of France. So it's very important and we can learn a lot from that example here in Canada. He, Mr. Couturier ha, went to the, uh, has his diploma from uh, higher studies, uh, territorial studies. He has served the uh, state as well as different communities. In 19, uh, 2016, he was appointed director of the National Association of Drags and then became a member of the board of directors for the National Institute of Heritage and the National Center for Books. He is a Knight of the Legion of Honor and Legion of Arts and Letters. In a personally level, level he has a training. He's, he's also a musician. He is a, trained as a percussionist. So without any further ado, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Mr. Laurent Roturier to this webinar. Thank you very much. I'm going to very humbly be try and meet the uh, expectations here. I'd like to say, give my greetings to her, your worship that I've already had the pleasure of meeting, but th uh, we can meet in this uh, using technology, even though not in person because of COVID, but I'd like to thank you for this initiative and for having, uh, thought of inviting uh, an official from France to uh, to ask him for his thoughts on a subject that is of importance today. I know that in Canada these are issues that are very complex in Canada as in France. Mr. Consul General also uh, my greetings I'm very pleased to meet you online and I'm glad to be able to exchange with you Perhaps we will be able to continue our discussions in Paris one day. And Madame Brigitte Poussel, with whom I've had the pleasure of discovering uh, her act activities. She works in uh, education and uh, artistic and cultural education. And we've, uh, we've had exchanges uh, between Canada and France on these issues. And I think that uh, uh, Madame 
your mayor you you're quite advanced in terms of artistic and cultural education where uh, where you are and we have a lot to learn here in france from you i'd like to send my greetings to uh, the chairperson of the uh, heritage board madame thierry whom i've already met on online in the past and mr leroux of course that whom we talked to last Friday or last Thursday, I believe, I, f I forget, but I'm happy to see you again, as well as Mr. Charon and everybody else from the embassy, from the consulate. And it is your heritage week that you normally uh, have at this time of year, but thank you for having thought of uh, inviting me. So from a logistics point of view, I did pre prepare a PowerPoint. I'm not going to, well, I, it's rather a slideshow. I don't even talk about the PowerPoint. I'd call it a slideshow, but I don't know if it's up to me to uh, show it on the screen or is it Brigitte? I don't know what it's, is uh, going to do that. Moncton is going to be showing the PowerPoint, the uh, slideshow. So perhaps we can share these, our screen then. What, uh, what is interesting, um, Madame Thériault and your worship in this webinar, I wanted, wanted to show you how we address the issue of heritage in France, but more specifically, I wanted to help you as elected officials and people uh, who are working towards the protection of heritage of course, the issues are not the same across the uh, the pond because the history is very different. But what it was important for me to show you how the history of France had fed into and induced this approach to heritage, which is very unique in France. And then it's Saturday and uh, last Saturday and Sunday, we had our heritage days and in spite of the virus, we were able to offer these heritage days with a, a, a very great public response in spite of COVID. And I think that France and the issue of heritage is really right at the heart of our country. And this is uh, one of the, it, it's what makes our, our foundation so solid, so strong in France is heritage. I'm not going to talk about, uh, well, I will mention Victor Hugo and Notre Dame de Paris and other uh, major uh, figures, but rather I'm going to explain how uh, in France we address the issue of heritage. And perhaps, perhaps you have the same attachment to your heritage there. Perhaps you want to develop further. But first of all, I think we should take a few moments to agree on the words we use. Heritage just like culture, are words that have different meanings, word that have, yes, several meanings, and we could have a different uh, definitions of these words. For example, we can talk about heritage in terms of financial uh, aspects. We can talk about private uh, heritage, uh, a family heritage. I'm going to talk about heritage in its historical terms. And as a public policy adopted by the state, by the communities, through associations and groups of volunteers for its protection, its conservation and its transmission. And I think it's important to understand that what we are implementing here that, well, we have to agree on what uh, we use, how we use the words. We have to agree on the definition. So can we share the screen now, or should I do it from my device? Perhaps, okay, well, if I find it, I can share my file on my desktop. So I have to find the PowerPoint. Here we go. So, can you see it on your screen? Yes, can you see the uh, slideshow? Yes, yes, we have it here. Here. 
Yep, just a second. We almost have it. No. Est-ce que ça marche, Jean-Pierre? Jean-Pierre, is it working? Well, I can see the first page here, but... Technology, of course, like always. It's a little uh, picky. I don't know if you can show it from Moncton. Can somebody show the uh, slides from Moncton? If not, I'll get started anyhow. Monsieur Roturi, nous voyons sur les. We can. This is Jean-Pierre here. We can see your presentation on the screen. Yes, well, I, it's, this, it's the first page, and I don't know how to move on to the following pages. Can somebody turn the page? Or not? On your keyboard. No, it doesn't seem to be moving forward. Oui, Brigitte. La, la touche espace pourrait marcher. À nous, on peut pas. Uh, uh, perhaps you could try spacebar. Avec, uh, Chloé. Mais nous, on peut rien faire. Et la touche espace, euh, non, euh, euh, une petite flèche habituelle euh, ne fonctionne euh, pas non plus. Non, I can't seem to move the pages ahead. Et en fait, il peut commencer à parler sur son truc. Le mieux, ce serait de lui dire qu'il commence à parler pendant que Jean-Pierre essaie de mettre la présentation. C'est tout. But you can see it in Moncton. You have it in front of you. Excuse me for interrupting. Mr. Turier can start his presentation while Jean-Pierre, you work on the, uh, you can work on the technical aspect. Yes. Why don't I do that? Okay. So I'm going to start talking. Yes, I think that is best. Otherwise, we might uh, we might lose too much time. So I'm going to talk to you about heritage, but heritage in the in its multiple sense. As a matter of fact, the Department of Culture in France has a general, a directorate general for heritage um, in the plural. It's, it's, there are two major pillars. There's the historical heritage, the ma material, pe uh, real property, buildings, monuments. You know that 44,000 buildings in France are protected as historic uh, monuments. They're, you know, a chateau, the chateaus, everybody's familiar with Notre Dame as well. But quite often we have different elements of, of heritage that are appear in everyday life. Uh, uh, parts of a trail, uh, for example, a building, a church in a village. So 44,000 uh, objects or buildings. That's the number of protected buildings in France. And these 44,000 buildings that as the regional directorate of uh, heritage, we're responsible for their maintenance, their protection, in order to be able to transmit them. Heritage is something that is quite simple, actually. 
because it's something that uh, the generations that preceded us, and in France they've been there for a long time, tens of thousands of years, if we talk about archaeology, and uh, these what, what generations that preceded us transmitted down to us, what we are responsible for maintaining, and what we are to, going to pass on to our descendants. And that's what we mean by heritage. There are buildings, of course, but also sometimes uh, movable uh, objects, uh, paintings, sculptures, uh, musical instruments, arms, but also texts, manuscripts. There is a lot of written heritage in our uh, libraries that are really uh, part of heritage. But we also have a broader vision of heritage, for example, of what we find in the uh, sea bottom. And we know that Canada also has, uh, sometimes have uh, shipwrecks that have been there for a long time. And in France, we have specialized teams that uh, search for these, um, what we call the subaquatic heritage, what is underwater today. So all of that is part of the, the material, the uh, tangible heritage but as well as the built heritage then we uh, which is inter interesting and important for all but there's the intangible side as of heritage as well that uh, that we work with and on as you do in canada uh, that we work with unesco for example on the intangible heritage for example it's defined as being traditions or living expressions inherited from our ancestors and uh, oral traditions as well. Um, but it's also found in social practices in rituals and festive events. And more broadly speaking, it's all the knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe or the knowledge and skills to produce traditional crafts. That's all part of the uh, intangible heritage. That's what we have, we're responsible for conserving and protecting and that we want to pass on to following generations. So that was for the definitions. Now that's just so you are aware of what I'm talking about when I talk of heritage and what uh, and how the public policies have been developed um, here in France, but also you, uh, your worship, but okay, I think the uh, slideshow is now working so we can start turning the pages. So this is all part of the heritage. If you want to move on to the next slide, thank you. So these were the definitions on the tangible and the intangible heritage. Next slide, please. Now, in the next slide, I wanted to explain to you why there is this uh, unique approach in France. I'm sure you know that we've been uh, marked by the revolution and, and the period starting in um, 1789 with the revolution. But the revolution was, the period was very agitated and even violent at times. Uh, violence against persons, but also violence against everything that is transmitted, everything that came from the ancient regime, where there was a destruction that was a major destruction of goods that belonged to the clergy or to the nobility. And uh, the beginning of the revolutionary period was, was had this major destruction. Uh, we can move on now, if you like. And now, starting with that revolution, then the state started to develop a new mission, the, re the new republic. So it's, it's no longer the ancient regime, but the republic developed a new mission. It uh, wanted to f search through these, ob these objects, these relics from the ancient regime. They had to choose the ones that were to be conserved, uh, con that were to be maintained. And, and in 1790, so uh, some time ago, of course, we, there was, we had the creation of Thirst uh, Commission for Monuments uh, that worked on the, uh, the to d d developing an inventory and to work towards the uh, cons conservation of 
works of art. And of course, everybody is familiar with Victor Hugo. He was one of the major actors to get people aware of the need to conserve and protect what had been uh, transmitted to us by past generations. And he was a, he was a, a elected official. He wrote, uh, as you know, every he wrote a number of mass masterworks, and he really denounced the successive and relentless delimition of a number of monuments from ancient France. So he, he for he, these demolishers, he called them, they were the ones who, who demolished all of these monuments, all of the remnants of the ancient regime. And so there was this, there was, uh, for example, at the time, well, even today, we still see the uh, destruction of the heritage in Syria, in uh, other uh, wars in Africa, for example, uh, are undergoing the same problem. And uh, you also were, were touched by what's going on in other parts of the world. And the, the barbarians destroy uh, monuments and historical monuments families try to maintain them and conserve and protect them and from from Elan Hugo and his his momentum w w was developed a policy in France and in Canada okay. and elsewhere yes, okay. um, we have a strong history of of this and this is what makes, well, in France, more specifically, this is what makes our approach so unique in France. It's because of these these figures still present present here today in 2020, still talk about Prosper Mérimé and talk about Victor Hugo and the, uh, the, uh, the, the will of the revolutionaries. So her heritage in itself has its roots a long time ago, but still in, in uh, the times of today. And the and and the 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 will there has to be uh, the will amongst these uh, these the great some of the greats that to maintain the momentum of the preservation now here you see a few dates since prosper merime who starting in the 1830s uh, created the first commission for historical monuments and then we're going to talk about it perhaps a little later, but he he started an inventory. He tried to develop a list of what deserved to be protected. And this is all of the work that, this is what Prosper Merimé did when he created this National Commission for Historical Monuments. He really set the foundation that then became the act, uh, uh, the law, the act of 1887, and then uh, a further law act in uh, 1905 and 1914 and that was all starting from the work of the inventory what is found in a certain community in a certain territory what deserves to be maintained or and or restored and passed on to future generations so this first message in in Moncton what would you like to what, that's what you have to determine. What would you like to pass on to future generations? Some of your built heritage, some of your oral traditions, perhaps, perhaps some elements of artistic creation, and this inventory that is indispensable for the construction of uh, and the definition of national heritage policy. Uh, in France, of course, the picture is different than in Canada. This um, this inventory, this uh, conservation is legislated. Uh, uh, France is not a, a, a federation, uh, and it has uh, when it does uh, adopt statutes, it, they apply to the whole country, and we do have those uh, statutes. I uh, spoke of uh, Victor Hugo, a very famous, illustrious uh, writer, um, but another very uh, illustrious French uh, author, André Malraux, was a part of the great liberators of France, and uh, who also uh, spoke for the preservation of the uh, heritage after the world wars 
destructions were a massive uh, at the French Re massive. Revolution, Same. but uh, also at the Second World War. And um, André Malraux um, uh, promoted the Act of 1962, who created in the French communes uh, the the preservation sectors, the preserved sectors, and that is a, a the infrastructure that went through history, and uh, with uh, the intervention of the state, when you have, when the, the, the government has to intervene to restore them, that they uh, that it is done with the original uh, design in mind, but also to provide um, uh, funds to um the, for the maintenance whether the public the, the buildings be public or private to provide funds to restore them and maintain them so it's it applies to this day but this uh, relies on the knowledge of the heritage for you uh, your worship mayor of moncton you first have to know Uh, the what uh, you want to preserve what is the heritage in your city what needs to be uh, preserved and 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 if in if i had uh, an advice to give you is uh, to find the expertise to um to do such an inventory in your city if it's not been done already uh in france um the Department of Culture would do uh, such an inventory uh, with um, experts whose, whose uh, task was, of course, to do the inventory, to catalog all of these um, um, tangible and intangible um, uh, heritage. And, and now this inventory um, is the responsibility of uh, regional councils, not from the central government or the, 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 the state, but uh, regional uh, entities. You know, I traveled uh, uh, throughout the world and, and, and I know uh, our government organizations for Canadians might appear uh, complicated and it is as well as, uh, as well for the protection of um, heritage, but that's how it works. Another very important act in France, a fairly recent uh, act from 2016, the, the Parliament uh, adopted the act for the uh, the freedom of uh, creation and the protection of um, historical sites. And um, the act also provides for the creation of a, a sector which is the re, uh, remarkable sites as uh, another um, tangible uh, heritage. Uh, so I've uh, presented this diagram to explain who who does what uh, when it comes to the protection of the uh, heritage. We all work for the Department of Culture. You have uh, the regional um, um, Councils who protect the uh, museum, archaeology, um, schools as well, uh, churches. <clears throat> and we have uh, cultural operators, as we call them in France, um, and their responsibility is to uh, overtake the rec responsibility for monuments. The um, national um, M Monuments uh, Council, who, for instance, uh, for example, is responsible for the Act de Triomphe. <clears throat> you know, decides when it is open to the public, but also uh, to fund the maintenance. Uh, we also have um, uh, the National Museums uh, Council, because when we speak of uh, protection of the heritage, uh, we also mean to to teach and to to explain the value uh, of a um, of a historical monuments of course by uh, this uh, education the, the educational aspect of the this, these uh, uh, centers will lead to uh, funding of um, the the conservation and restoration 
a few figures, a few statistics, so that you can um, refer uh, in um, the Paris uh, arrondissement, Ile de France, which is you know the, the uh, surrounding Paris. Uh, the uh, regional director, uh, the re uh, regional directorate for cultural affairs, spends uh, 28 million euros. I haven't converted in Canadian um, dollars. <laughs> they, you know, the, the currency fluctuates uh, very quickly. But uh, on Ile de France, there are close to 4,000 historical monuments. A regional directorate like mine, uh, two thirds or, or 68%, 68 of the uh, uh, personnel um, is um, responsible for um, heritage trades. So uh, professionals work on a daily ba basis to um, protect and restore the historical uh, monuments. But the policy doesn't rest with uh, monuments uh, only. We also protect gardens. In France, we have 40 remarkable gardens that are under that are considered um, tangible um, heritage. We have um, um, architectural uh, designs that are uh, protected. Uh, actually, you have a few examples of, of a remarkable uh, gardens. This is one um, sub-division uh, uh, of the um, regional um, directorate, the, the section responsible for remar remarkable gardens. Um, we have another one. Uh, a a um, sector that is interested in to tomorrow's uh, heritage or uh, the 20, we, we used to call it the uh, 20th century, but now we call it the uh, a remarkable modern architecture uh, sector. Um, it uh, covers um, um, infrastructures that may not yet be considered uh, protected, but uh, but they do uh, present a very remarkable architecture, and um, and it is to uh, remain a, a testimony of uh, uh, today's uh, architecture, and it will become uh, tomorrow's uh, heritage. Um, you know our, you know when we talk about uh, heritage, it's not only to protect old infrastructure, old buildings, but we have heritage being created as we speak uh, in, in modern time. Uh, some um, architectural um, prowess will become uh, tomorrow's um, heritage. And again to you, Madam Mayor, uh, uh, in France we created a network and we call them uh, the towns and countryside of, um, of art and history. And we call the VPAH, and a community like yours, as you are doing to, today through webinars, get together experts, teachers, professionals uh, to discuss the the heritage of a of a city. What constitutes the heritage of this um, city or this larger community? Um, and then you prepare um, a, 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 a file on a given uh, uh, monument or given tangible or intangible heritage to work on and to determine uh, policies to protect it. So uh, um, perhaps Moncton could become um, uh, one uh, uh, of such a, a city that you know maybe Moncton could be the first one to have this uh, designation in Canada if if this uh, our VPEH uh, were to be adapted to uh, the Canadian uh, reality. And to com come back to the uh, preservation uh, policy, uh, what do we do to protect? and preserve the heritage. I've been talking protection and preservation and restoration, but what does it mean uh, concretely? 
so when you determine that one historical site uh, with, uh, will be protected, uh, um, we uh, create a service of public interest that is a limit to uh, the property rights uh, in the public interest. Um, uh, of course, a, an owner of such a historical property uh, may want to have to um, protect the property, but his, his freedom to um, dispose of his property is limited. The, you know, there is a constraint, but uh, the counterpart in France is the funding, the funding of the protection. The state and sometimes communities will fund uh, and finance the owner to preserve is um his property so that he can restore the property the heritage but within the constraints um, um as designed by the original um property so this is a constraint on the uh, uh owner i mean we don't constrain for the pleasure of constraining we are a democratic um, uh, country, just as in Canada, um, it's just limitations in the public's interest to protect um, historical sites for uh, future generations. And we do it with two tools. First, the registration with the, monumental, uh, the historical uh, monuments uh, registry and the classification, which is an additional protection uh, that is for the monuments that are uh, that are of national interest, and, and of course, if you also you you get the uh, registration and the classification, then it's a a, a enhanced uh, funding. So I've uh, given you uh, figures: forty-five thousand uh, monuments protected, uh, thirty-one registered um and uh 13000 that are classified so i want to give you a few examples of what we do in matters of protection um i took the uh, public institutions or pu public properties the, the 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 best known the chateau de fontainebleau where the uh, kings used to reside, goes back to the 18th century as, as a, a royal residence. And it, it was nationalized under uh, Napoleon's uh, reign. Uh, Fontainebleau, um, uh, with the bicentenary of Napoleon, this will be one of the chateaux that will be uh, very much uh, become the emblem of this uh, bicentenary. Uh, another, even better known, is the Chateau de Versailles. <clears throat> this is a very exceptional uh, heritage that was uh, willed to the state and is maintained by the state via, via the uh, Department of Culture. Um, and it's open to the public, of course. And a third example, a very interesting one, a more recent uh, uh, heritage is the Quai d'Orsay, and then today a museum it used to be a train station, and, but it has been converted into a museum at the end of the uh, uh, 19th and 20th century. Uh, again, people can visit and and, and uh, walk through um, uh, traveling in time if not by train, to rediscover such a uh, beautiful uh, architecture of the Quai d'Orsay. Now it has become a museum. So those were three examples um, of protected uh, properties. Now, the players um, in such um, protection and preservation because the state cannot act alone, although it has a, a, a very important role in this uh, preservation. Heritage is a shared uh, um, responsibility. 
uh, of course, you've got your uh, civil servants who are responsible for the, the maintenance, but it's also uh, involves it also involves people who are passionate about heritage, just like you are, th that are determined to protect uh, the heritage. Um, in France, <clears throat> communes uh, are very important players in. Uh, heritage preservation without their uh, contribution we couldn't maintain them half of the um, the buildings <clears throat> that are threatened are the responsibility of communes and um, we often have small villages who you know uh, have castles one two castles to maintain in, in very small villages. <clears throat> and, uh, but you know, like you in, in Moncton, you are responsible for uh, urban planning. And so those communes are. <clears throat> and recently in France, ever since uh, the act that was adopted in 2016, together we work, <clears throat> state and communes, on preservation uh, measures <clears throat> that um, uh, uh, rests on uh, urban planning. Now, I'm not uh, totally uh, knowledge knowledgeable about how you uh, take charge of the urban planning in Moncton or in Canada, but um, <clears throat> you know you have to plan ahead. You know, ahead ten years, fifty years. 100 years to determine what will uh, be uh, uh, preserved over the coming centuries so communes are the you know the, the frontline players in this uh, protection now i'm very happy um, that you in moncton took this um, uh, initiatives of holding this webinar because it's with this awareness with this <clears throat> when, when you take over this uh, responsibility and decide what is, needs to be protected, it will be done so by the future generations. Now, the communes are very important players, but private owners are also important players in France. People who um, own a protected uh, monument or a building, 44% uh, of these uh, historical monuments uh, are privately owned and either it was um, they acquired it because they they they're passionate about uh, history and they want to restore it. <clears throat> in in France, you have many sites in the south of France, for instance. Uh, they, some of them have transformed part of their uh, heritage, turned it into. Um, um, meeting places, you know, inns perhaps, uh, hotels, but part of their uh, property is converted so that they can make money to maintain it. And sometimes it's passed uh, down generation from one ge generation to the next and, and they need money to restore it. So what? I can think of uh, someone, uh, Madam, Mary Mene, uh, Rosa Bonner, who was a very um, uh, well-known um, painter uh, in, in the United States at the end of the 19th century, um, worked with Buffalo Bill. Um, uh, Rosa Bonner had a, a protective workshop um, I here in France. Um, and today, during those two heritage days, uh -huh. the property is open to the public, and the one, the person who bought it, um, has turned it into a, a small inn and cafe, and that's how this workshop can uh, be uh, preserved and survive. Uh -huh. and, uh, so you've got the uh -huh. commune, well, the the the, the national anyway. state, the government, right. the communes, the private. Owners and the volunteers, uh -huh. they also have a, a very important yeah. role to play in the uh, restoration uh, projects. Yeah. So.
this time? We uh, create, you know, we we um, launch uh, restoration projects, Let's talk, okay. and we yeah, um, appeal to uh, volunteers time. to come in and give a hand, and especially with the young people. <clears throat> The young people sometimes uh, are, are at loose ends what to do with their lives. They are, are a bit sometimes overwhelmed by the, the speed of change. And <clears throat> so to get these young people interested in the heritage, to, to, give, to give them a, a, a reference, um, and to perhaps uh, you know, trigger some spark of interest or passion, you know, that's, and I know in Canada, you also are interested in your youth. So these are restoration projects um, that um, that we, we have going on all the time, all over the country um, is um, um, a way to interest the youth who in turn, uh, in the future, we'll take over this uh, heritage. So it's a way to train them, to educate them to the importance of the heritage. Um, and, um, you know, it is important to talk to future generations. Of course, we have to respect the uh, past generations and thank them for what they have passed on to us. But in, in you know by appealing to these uh, young uh, um, volunteers, we you know we want to make sure that they in turn protect the um, this uh, heritage. There's also the legal framework that we call the Code du Patrimoine or the Heritage Code. <laughs> you know it's a bit very passion. Um, passionate bedside uh, book, but anyway, it, it includes all of the uh, provisions uh, concerning uh, the preservations, whether it be archives, the libra uh, libraries, museums, archaeology, um, uh, and and we also have a chapter on the uh, provisions relative to overseas. Uh, um, overseas territories, uh, Mr. Uh, Consul General in Canada, you know about Saint Pierre Miquelon and what is done over there. So, it is. I mean, it's about a hundred pages, uh, but you know, it's necessary to um, legalize the, the uh, protection of heritage. Now, I'd like to give you a few more concrete examples on what we can do within a DRAC, within the Department of Culture. And of course, we are, one of our main roles is that of preservation. And I can't present here to you today in Moncton without bringing up Notre Dame de Paris, of course, because Notre Dame de Paris was and in, created this terrible wave of emotion throughout the world. I had uh, taken position just a few months after the fire, but at that time we were already involved in the restoration of Notre Dame. This terrible image of the fire last April 15th. Well, now, why am I talking about Notre Dame? Because Notre Dame de Paris is one of the 83 cathedrals in France that are maintained by the Department of Culture and the DRAC. So the DRAC in Ile-de-France is responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of Notre Dame de Brie. The night of the fire, teams were already in the uh, cathedral to safeguard, to, to save some of the works and to protect everything that they could from the fire. And so uh, the, the Crown, uh, crown of Thrones of the Christ. A number of objects were taken out by these brave souls that night uh, of April 2019, and uh, to try and make sure that no artifacts were lost. So the the fire was terrible; it was dramatic. But the the exercise and the work done by the firefighters made. Uh, were sufficient to make sure that the whole thing didn't collapse. And so the movement of solidarity, I'd like to take advantage, take this opportunity to, to thank all of those from the whole world over who participated and who are now working towards the restoration. We had 350,000 donors throughout the world. That's incredible. 
um, for 900 million euros in donations to restore Notre Dame. So what I wanted to mention here today was thank you, thanks to the support that we received from the world over and a number of people in Canada, in the States donated. Of course, that was very heartwarming to see this movement of solidarity. And today, Notre Dame de Paris is being uh, restored as we decided to restore it uh, as well as we could. And you saw the, the arrow, the uh, spire from, uh, well, that you saw that uh, part of the, uh, that was going to be restored. We're going to redo the structure in wood identically. And we're going to open Notre Dame back to the public in, in 2024. Everything will be as authentic as possible, and we will make it open to visitors from the world over. But Notre Dame is not only for believers, it's open to all of those people who are passionate about heritage. And and uh, I, once again, I'd like to thank our donors. So I'd like to show you a picture now that last Tuesday we uh, ha saw the return of one of the three statues that had been on the spire that had been uh, that had been uh, taken away before the fire fortunately these were the statues uh, built by Violet Le Duc and this well this allows us to to feel better and to restore uh, Notre Dame and it will allow us to restore Notre Dame with these statues as had been uh, as it had been in the past so I just wanted to mention Notre Dame now and uh, and I give you a, a few other examples of what we are doing for the heritage. I mentioned a little earlier that we had our European days of for heritage. We used to have the heritage days in France. Now we have European, European heritage, heritage days. And perhaps one day we can have European and Canadian heritage days. Why not? These days were created in 1984 by the Department of Culture. And uh, it's the, the DRAC in, in the regions that actually implement them and carry them out. So every year the, during these two days, we open up these sites that are not terribly accessible sometimes. The rest of the year, uh, the, the the Palais de l'Elysée, for example, some of the different préfectures, the city halls, some of the embassies are open, some of the gardens, <coughs> and normally, of course, uh, the, these days are extremely successful because during these two days we get almost 20, 12 million visitors. This year, in twenty twenty, because of COVID, we didn't even try to uh, have such a number of participants, but even in Ile-de-France, in the Paris region, over 13,000 sites were remained open, of course, with the proper uh, measures in place for the uh, health and safety of everybody. And so many French people came to visit the sites. And I, when I opened up I, the, this webinar, I said that Heritage is very close. People is very dear to people's heart. It's what keeps us together. It's what's, it's the glue that keeps us together. And throughout this crisis, throughout this terrible period, once again, this it's it's been shown how important heritage is and how important it is to maintain and preserve it because citizens are asking for it. But so these these all these thousands of uh, buildings is very difficult to maintain. The state does so with the means it has at hand, as do the communities. But uh, earlier I was talking about uh, another person whom perhaps you are familiar with uh, by, from TV, Mr. Stéphane Bern. Stéphane Bern ha has a mission for what he calls the uh, heritage at risk. It's threatened. And so his idea is very simple. French are, are players. I mean, they, they tend to gamble, if you like. There's all sorts of lottery terminals. There's all sorts of draws. You, uh, there's these scratch tickets. Um, and uh, for the last three years, since 2017, we have a draw, a lottery, that are that for which the proceeds go completely to the restoration of a heritage site. And here you see a photo of a fort that was chosen in the Paris area. It's uh, from the 18th century. 
you can see there's there's trees growing on top of it. But uh, if uh, we do nothing, well, the roots will start breaking apart. The, the stone and the uh, walls will collapse over time and nothing will be left. But because of the proceeds of this lottery, this heritage lottery, we'll be able to restore it. And that will will be able to pass it on to future generations. So the millions of euros, 25 millions of euros were... Uh, Get, come from these from the um, the lottery organization uh, heritage lottery. And now I wanted to give you another concrete example of uh, the sector, uh, and that is archaeology. Uh, and here you see a picture of some work that's being done right here in Ile de France in this very region that we think that the region is uh, recent and modern, and by, by recent, I mean a few hundred years only. But, but in fact, there, there was human occupation uh, a long time before that, perhaps uh, 10 or 12,000 years before today. And this is one of the particularities of the Department of Culture as well. It has on staff some archaeologists that try to better understand the history of the territory, the history of human occupation and human presence in the region. And here in France, we have a research workshop with uh, Professor Yves Copins, who is well known worldwide as a scientist. And uh, he's worked on the discovery of Lucy in Africa, and really an extraordinary uh, person who is giving the, is, is discovering some of the keys to the earlier earliest inhabitants, the uh, hunter-gatherers who were already here 10 or 12,000 years away, perhaps right where my office is in Paris, uh, right by the river. And uh, they lived in, the, uh, in this territory and they found traces of them. So of course, these are uh, works of art by building these, uh, these quarries, well, by building quarries, quite often they found bones, animal bones, and other objects. And we were able to uh, div discover their style of living, their mode of, of living. And in Canada, I know that you have uh, traces of ancient life as well. And archaeology is something that is uh, that really uh, interesting to a great number of people that al allows us to find out more about those who came a long time ago. So I just wanted to mention that here today. And in to wrap up, because I think that uh, I want to limit myself to the time I've been uh, given, but since we are in a dialogue here between France and Canada, I just wanted to say a few words on the international cooperation framework on heritage. Of course, a lot is being done through cooperation as here today with exchanges between scientists occasionally, between specialists <clears throat> who share their knowledge, but all quite often, well, UNESCO is an important partner in this cooperation and more specifically uh, the 1972 convention. <clears throat> on the protection of nature and the preservation of cultural assets. You know that UNESCO has more than 1,200 sites of which 869 were cult cultural sites that are protected by UNESCO. They have a world a global committee, a world committee that is responsible for the identification of world heritage sites. And it's very important. And of course, in France, we have a certain number of sites that are protected. Um, here you see the example of uh, Saint-Jacques-de-Compostelle, the, the, the uh, trail, and the, but there are a number of other sites that we can act on to protect our heritage. And it's, it's important today also because tomorrow you're going to meet, if you haven't already done so, you're going to meet those who can help you. Um, I mean, 
perhaps UNESCO can help you because that's its uh, that's its mission is to help everybody who is really involved with their heritage. So that is the end of my presentation. I know that the subject is very dense. It's very intense. I hope that I was able to give you a few ideas for further reading and some a better understanding of how France works to protect its heritage. But along with Mr. Consul General, and uh, in uh, I'd like to give you some ideas for how Moncton can work in the future for its heritage. Thank you for listening to me, and I give you the floor back. Thank you, Mr. Rotirier. What an excellent presentation. Uh, I have a lot of questions, but in in the last four years, when I look at uh, the world history, and there was only one day in the in the last four years, as far as I know, there's only one day where the world news was not concerned with politics, American politics, or or COVID in these last few months, there was only one event that was outside of that realm, and that was the fire at Notre Dame. And even with the tragedy, the tragic nature of that, the world's attention stopped. Everybody stopped for at least 24 hours just to talk about that and to, to focus on that. And that's the power of heritage. And I, I truly appreciate your uh, your desire to to restore the monument, but I have a question: What are you doing in France to connect with youth, not not children necessarily, but let's say the the twenty year olds, thirty year olds, those who are a little young professionals, let's say, because they're the ones who are going to carry the weight of heritage in the future. Because today there, there are a lot of distractions, other distractions. How can we connect the importance of heritage and architecture and landscape and the youth? I don't think we can ever do enough. Of course, we try. I gave you a few examples, the restoration workshops, the... Uh, restoration efforts, different institutes and schools, but every generation has to renew this work to of awareness of the heritage. And I don't think we do enough in France, even though I, I think the French government does a lot, pays a great deal of attention to this, but we tend to think that heritage is something that interests older people and so what we're trying to do is to get people to understand that heritage is what we see here today in front of us today it's and uh, architectural creation is uh is uh, today can be heritage but so it's an educate it's education but we can never do enough but but I think that is the way that in the future we'll be able to make sure it, it's maintained. Now I talk about these workshops. We have a, a project that's called This Is My Heritage that I'm piloting, with, uh, driving with one of my colleagues. And we, uh, my colleague is working in schools and in classrooms to develop games and workshops on heritage. But, and I think that in Canada, you're better positioned than we are in France. Uh, in terms of education and uh, tra the transmission of these values in the schools. Uh, do, do you have any, uh, do the others have any questions, Councillor Thériault? You, can you hear me? Yeah. You mentioned, and thank you for your presentation, Mr. Retirier. 
You talked about the possibility of setting up partnerships with the, the city of Moncton or, well, throughout your presentation, you mentioned it. And perhaps Joanne can answer. I don't know who I should address my question to, but it would be interesting to pursue this conversation. And we have to note that today is not the end of these discussions on heritage, but rather the beginning. And in hoping that we will have the opportunity to continue to work together. Uh, Mr. Consul General, can do you want to respond? Yes, I'll try and respond. Bridget, are you there? Because, yes, if, of course, a, a partnership with, uh, from at the embassy, we have, uh, it's with, it's with the, the specialists, the cultural specialists in at the embassy who can establish links with the French Department of Culture and the city of Moncton, like we did already for, for this first webinar. And if you allow, thank you, Brigitte. Yes, we have to work together. And I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Roturier. It was a wonderful presentation. But we have there are different levels of possibility here. Here in Canada, of course, you have the federal level that autom automatically, uh, uh, my question has to be rerouted to my colleague from the embassy. But we have a system for registering our uh, our heritage and even last year we we um i visited uh, last august i visited the cathedral in moncton that was built by the acadians and uh, people were talking about destroying it a few years ago and we luckily we there was mobilization at city hall and different associations one was created i met uh, its chairperson who fought to get this cathedral listed as a heritage site. And so now it helps in the cultural life of Moncton. Just two or three weeks ago, I went to a first concert, a music, classical music concert um, in this cathedral in Moncton. It has some interactive equipment as well. So there is a, there is a, at the federal level, at Heritage Canada, there's already the system of uh, inventory and registration of sites. But now we do have a relationship with uh, the embassy and we have different sessions with the provinces, including New Brunswick. Now, should we, or should we suggest to our friends at the provincial level, like, uh, like should we suggest a, a Heritage Day I think it's a wonderful idea and our, our role with Bridget would be to push that kind of idea forward. Why not start in Moncton and then spread it, spread it further throughout Canada? And Rampart is an association I'm very familiar with because as a young student, I participated in some of the workshops and it really allows our youth to, to develop their, um, their awareness of heritage and it's, it allows more interaction f f on, on an archaeological site from youth from the world over. And so you also talked about the labels. By listening to you, I went to the page on uh, oh, the, the, uh, the label of uh, city, cities and countryside of history, and I don't know that label, I don't know if we could make uh, the province of New Brunswick or different regions of New Brunswick, we could, if we could make it a, a city or countryside of history. And knowing that New Brunswick and in the Atlantic provinces, generally speaking, there is this wealth of assets that needs to be uh, developed further. The heritage can serve tourism and to help develop tourism. This pandemic has shown us how uh, tourism is interesting. This, if after fuel uh, spending, the uh, greatest spending is in tourism, and I think there's a lot of uh, infra, a lot of possibility uh, still. So I think we should develop this label of city or countryside of uh, value of, of 
of art and culture. So I think that would take a certain uh, level of co cooperation between myself and my uh, counterparts in Ottawa and your worship, the mayor. And also, how can we match and cooperate um, cities and territories? I would encourage the cities and the territories in Atlantic Canada to develop this heritage value. So uh, the would perhaps how could we what projects could we work on specifically as communities? Thank you. Yeah. I talked about these uh, cities and countryside of art and culture at the beginning because this this label are well allowed them to develop and to create an association of these different areas with a label because they're also an experience sharing sites the state can provide a certain expertise but nothing is worth the experiences of the elected officials themselves and the sharing knowing that heritage is the is the is not a political matter it's a it's a matter uh, uh, in the hearts of people, of men and women, and uh, and all of those people who share that passion of heritage, and that's something very important because it creates um, it, it cre creates more tourism, and especially in this period of crisis uh, in which tourism was halted, <coughs> and uh, well. Tourism was greatly impacted, for sure, and it's the 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 uh, this idea of a label that's very important, as these cities and and countryside of history are. Well, th there's a number of uh, associations that have developed around that, and even U UNESCO gives it that label that that attracts the greatest number of visitors throughout the world will come to the ca channel the canal in the midi because it's protected by unesco people go to compostelo uh, santiago de compostelo because it's a unite unesco site heritage site so th and that's all because of the label so there is there has to be a cooperation between peers between peers between mayors and and city halls And I think it's something that's very important to work on. And but I could certainly put you in, uh, uh, give you the information on the uh, person in charge of this network of uh, of cities of value of of historical and arts. And uh, it's they they already have sh uh, ex shared uh, experiences with other s sites in Europe, and I'm sure they'd be happy to share with you. Now, something that we did not address uh, so much, but we decentralized, but when we, we used to have exchanges on uh, on archeology, span on different projects, or when we had uh, on Iraq and other countries that, that were in war, where we had exchanges of professionals, but uh, that, as far as I know, we did not do very much in the way of exchanges with Canada, especially on the exchanges amongst professionals who could well share their expertise and throw throw a, a, a different eye on uh, these issues. And Mr. Consul General, you talked about the protection of the church. This. So this has an effect then in the planning matters because there's no provision per se. Well, I have absolutely no jurisdiction and I've already said too much. I'll let the uh, city of Moncton respond to that. But I know that the cathedral is now a federal heritage site. But in terms of planning, I don't know how it affects the uh, municipality. Your Worship. Yes, 
In terms of the cathedral and the uh, federal heritage, is that the question? Well, the the example of the cathedral when it becomes a federal heritage site, you and your land planning rules and regulations, does it prevent you from building something next door, a big building? Would it ensure that you preserve um, the, the the neighborhood if you were to restore tomorrow? Does it have any an impact on your uh, planning, or urban planning? Yes, I of course, but I think Madame Thériault could probably respond better than me. Well, thank you again. Yes, and John, John is quite familiar with this issue. We we have designations within the uh, our municipalities that you call the communes, but that also at the federal level, uh, or in Paris and elsewhere. So there there are two possibilities of designation and of uh, heritage recognition. And then from there, there are rules, yes, which means we cannot build right next door or attach, uh, we have to use certain materials and so on. So in that sense, we probably looked in your country because you've been doing it for a number of years, but in the future, how can we work together and I know that, Madam Mayor, I don't know where we're at with this, but the Association of Francophone and Francophile Cities of America that you're involved in, but I don't know, with COVID, I don't know where they are at, but perhaps through that network, we might have been able to work further with organizations in France. Be and uh, to address heritage, because I think every time we had a, a meeting, we well, each meeting had a specific theme. So perhaps the next meeting could be focused on heritage. And then uh, we could invite you once again, uh, Mr. Roturier, or I don't know, just get the ball rolling. And, and because this affects tourism, of course, uh, and Quebec is interested, it's a part of the network. Yes, Quebec and Louisiana, but there's a new mayor in Lafayette and uh, who is not f sufficiently involved in the network yet. And uh, with COVID, uh, uh, since COVID, this, it's been uh, radio silence. So I'm not, I'm not sure about the future of that network, but it's a good idea because tourism and historical tourism <clears throat> Is a, is a big part of the whole network. Very good idea. No. Uh, 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 Madam uh, Mayor, if you allow me, we, there's a whole realm of possibilities that is opening up after Mr. Roturier's speech, who, ex who explained what is possible starting from A local situation going right to the UNESCO label of a heritage site and if we start with a her local situation we can develop a very strong policy that would set the bar for other pol uh, municipalities other cities that could then in turn establish con contacts with uh, the international level, and France would be very happy to work with you on this. And COVID, paradoxically, is favorable to the uh, development of links and the development of cultural policies that are specific to heritage, given everything you just heard. We've talked a lot about uh, developing uh, an inventory to develop a list of uh, sites and really to promote everything that is heritage. And at, in that sense, we can help you, we can support you. And we can do that during COVID as well. But there's the, pol the policy to begin with and then how to implement technically, uh, uh, practically speaking, with the experts who are necessary, we can help you with that, with Mr. Roturier's 
help but because he he's very familiar with the networks as exist in france and with uh, everything that you already have in moncton it's a great start uh for to, to develop further links with friends now in terms of the date centralization we also have the possibility of setting up projects in a territory that you're more comfortable with based on the expertise that might be in different areas and who speak to you and who and which correspond best to what you're hoping to attain in terms of a heritage policy but it might not it might not be the same as out west or in the prairies or even in louisiana so i just wanted to add that and it seems to me that it seems to me that that would be a first step um because it's a first stepping stone let's say let's use this the example of stones because we are talking about heritage so it's a first stone to set down as a, what might be possible, what we can build together based on what you have learned here today. If I may add something, I mean, I believe a lot has been done already in Moncton, but the main thing is to know what the inventory what what in inventory consists uh, of your heritage or probably oral traditions not only buildings but that should be listed in a, an inventory you have to make a list of what you believe is part of your heritage Maybe there is a building, a, a, a specific architectural design. That's where you start. I believe that's where you start. Concretely, draw up the list of things in Moncton, you believe, is things that are part of the um, heritage. And then you gather all all people, volunteers, elected, experts, uh, passionate people, um, you know, what did the former generations leave you that you want to pass on? What, what is the history of the city? Of course, it requires time and energy, exchanges, uh, dialogues, but there's no limit to what can constitute a heritage. It can be uh, documents, writings, books, uh, whatever will link Moncton today to Moncton yesterday. Uh, yesterday, it can be, it can go uh, very far. It can be nature as well, remarkable uh, trees, uh, a garden. That's That's part of heritage. Anything that will link you to the past and that you really desperately want to pass on to the future generations. So you, I, I believe you could start by drawing up this inventory. That's, that could be the first step. I'm aware of the time, time passing, and I, I and it's much later in France for you, Mr. Rotulier. This was a very excellent presentation and a very good uh, exchange. We're all on the, on the same uh, wavelength. I, we we believe in in history and, and heritage, and it's important, I believe, to have a, a connection between France and uh, Moncton, you know this the, this cathedral that we have in in Moncton. It was built by um, artisans from France, a lot of it. So this uh, this discussion um, is of great value, uh, Mr. Uh, Roturier. Your presentation was excellent, and I hope that uh, we uh, keep this dialogue between France and Moncton and L'Acadie, if you are uh, willing to do so. 
of course, I'm very uh, willing to work with the consulate and the embassy. Uh, after this uh, webinar, if you have further questions, uh, please uh, email them to me or it, by whatever means, uh, send them to me because we can uh, continue this uh, conversation uh, um, after the webinar. And I'd be very happy to continue this dialogue. Thank you. Great. Very generous of you, Mr. Roturier. And um, thank you to all uh, participants in this uh, webinar. And thank you to the French Embassy and the uh, French Consulate here in Moncton. Thank you for uh, the uh, City Council. Thank you, uh, Madam, uh, Your Worship, Madam Mayor. And this is a good way to start um heritage week so i hope to see you soon <laughs> we'll see you soon with the past <laughs> goodbye merci à tous au revoir merci au revoir